EFCC ready to address corruption at all levels amid battle to sustain anti-corruption war. And governors have been asked to loosen their grips on local government. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anacom. The president, Bolamed Tinubu's government has promised to renew hope of many Nigerians, saying that he would fight corruption. But since the arrest of the embattled chairman of the Economic Crime, Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdul Rashid Bawa, there seems to be an unusual quiet in the anti-graft agency, especially with the unactualized threats to arrest some of the immediate past governors and prevent the corrupts among them from traveling. The initial zeal shown by the federal government to stamp out corruption appears to be losing steam, which makes us question the battle to sustain the anti-corruption war. Well, joining us to discuss this is Mr. Dayo Kayade. He's a social political technocrat. Mr. Kayade, thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Great. Let's start by looking at the fact that it's been 100 plus days for Mr. President in office and um, many would say 100 days is not enough to assess a government. Um, some others would say, well, with the putting together of Mr. President's cabinet and, you know, the, um, the, the steps and the strides so far, it would show whether the president is really serious about fighting corruption and bringing that renewed hope. But let me start from, you know, the issue of renewed hope. One of the things that the president had said he was going to do was to com continue from where his predecessor stopped. In the fight against corruption under the Buhari administration, many would not score the former president even up to 50%. Um, and here we are, Mr. President has um, inherited that same anti-corruption um, war. Do you see a body language of Mr. President in that direction of wanting to seriously fight corruption? Yes, uh, Mary Ann, let me quickly say this because uh, in assessing anybody, whether one day or two days or three days or 100 days, even eight years, you got to look at two things. Number one, why you do a campaigning? What were your promises to the people? Number two, you are there Lagos. based on and that, constitutionality. And that is too long. You are there based on the constitutionality of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. What does that constitution stipulate as regards your relationship with the people? And all has to boil down to two things again. One, ensuring good livelihood of the people and then two ensuring safety and security of lives and properties of the people now if we prepare a checklist vis-a-vis -vis these stipulations i want viewers to judge themselves what percentage are they going to give to Mr. President. Now, coming to issue of corruption, I've always been saying it, and I continue to say it. Can corruption ever fight corruption? Where you have, where you have 10 lions, and then you have 10 uh, uh, goods. Which one do you think the lion will fight to eat? There is no way corruption can ever fight corruption. I will give you exam an example of what is on ground now. Look at the issue of metawali. The SY chairman of EFCC had promised him that immediately that stoga of, of 
uh, what what do I call it now? That you cannot you cannot investigate a chief executive of a state or the president immunity. That immunity clause as provided by the constitution. He said immediately he drops that he was going to prosecute him on the issue of the seventy billion naira, of which he allocated or he gave out contracts to some proxies and he paid them without even executing anything. And here we are, Metawali, being a minister, not just a junior minister, but high ranking minister. So what do you expect? There are a whole load of them too. Who were governors before that Bauer had promised that, listen, I am not going to allow any of you to travel out of this country without you dropping all the money that you have stolen. Where are these governors now? They are now in the Senate. I will give you another example of the current Senate president. He was supposed to go to jail when he deflected to APC at that time. And you remember what uh, Osho Mule said while he was the chairman of uh, APC then. That any sinner who can drop his or her party and come and come to APC we definitely becomes an angel. Where is that governor now? He's now the Senate president. So tell me, how do you expect the EFCC as is to perform? Because they're now more powerful than EFCC. How, how, are, how, how the do you problem mean, here is we have EFCC? not been building. I'm so we have sorry. Not been building institutions. But we have been building personalities. When you say the EFCC is no longer powerful, what exactly do you mean? We've seen them arrest. In, in, say, right now in their custody, there is the C, former CBN governor. In their custody is also their former boss. So uh, again, when you say they're not powerful, how exactly do you mean? The issue is, the issue is, when you are talking about, the, about those two people, you have to also look deeply that... They stepped on some powerful tools. That is why they are there. Why is why is former former CBN deputy governor that lady not in EFCC EFCC net? Why is why is some of these governors not in EFCC net? Where were they left on the hook? Just the way. I mean, unlike the way the former uh, 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 governor of CBN and the former chairman of EFCC had been in custody for how many months now? Do you have do you have the constitutional right to detain to detain not a criminal now, but a suspect beyond uh, uh, some particular hours? So why are we doing this to the two of them? Remember, even Autumn, Autumn that was asked to come to explain some things, was he not released? So what has happened to these two people? Okay. Are you now saying because they are stepped on some toes, you now want to deal with them? The problem in this nation is rather than us building strong institutions, we have been building strong individuals. Okay. And that is exactly what is playing out. All right, I'll come back to you because I want to I wanna paint another scenario for you. But joining us again is um, uh, the Chief Political Advisor to the Governor of Imo State, Eina Onegbu. Mr. Onegbu, thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Uh, I think that you need to unmute yourself. But let me come back to you, Mr. Coyote. Now, I wanted to paint a, a scenario. Um, when you say that detention, and I'm, I'm not in any way holding brief for the federal government or the EFCC, nor the DSS. We've seen these kinds of scenarios play out. Um, let's take, for example, the leader of the Shiite group. They're still in custody. Do you know that? Yeah, um, Elzazaki. Elzazaki. We still have Namdi Kanu, even after a court order, 
has been has asked yeah. for him to be released. So, what is new about this? The, again, I, I remind you, Mr. President. Mr. New. President had said that he would continue from where his predecessor stopped. Um, so maybe this is what he meant in part. Hasn't been on corruption. Rather, tact, tact, announcing tact as public disturbances from the two of them. So their scenario, their scenario cannot be uh, 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 a consonant with that of either Bauer or that of CBDA. There is no correlation between those two scenarios. Because El Zazaki, El Zazaki is talking about freedom. Uh, Namdekano is also talking about freedom. Unlike that of CBN governor and Bauer that are both talking about corruption. And the issue is this, I'm still saying it, and I will still say it. I was affected. I was affected, really, by activities of the SYCN government. And I will never be in support of what he did while he was the CBN governor. However, however, here is a country that has rules, regulations, and guidelines guiding interrogation of anybody that had gone ultraviolence with our, our, I mean, with our, with the rules of the land. So why are we not following the rules? Mr. Kaiden, the just, just hold. Case. Just hold that thought. Let me just quickly bring back Mr. Onegbu in. Um, Mr. Yina Onegbu, can you hear me now? Mr. Onegbu, can you hear me now? Yes, I'm hearing you. Ah, perfect. Thank you for joining us. Um, we just needed to be sure that your audio is working. Um, let me let me bring you in now. Um, looking at the anti corruption the anti corruption fight by. President Tinubu, of course, many would say he just got into office, but there seemed to have been that very um, energetic drive for Mr. President when he just got into office with the arrest of the CBN governor uh, and several yeah. other issues. You know, um, we, we do know that he had a private investigator looking into the books in the CBN, et cetera, et cetera. But then it looks like that track is gradually, you know, going cold. And many people are saying it's too early in the day for the track to go cold. Well, share your thoughts with me on what you think about Mr. President's um, fight against corruption. Do you see the body language of a man who would be able to do more, much more than his predecessor? But I, I wouldn't want to encourage the usual cliche in Nigeria of sounding too sanctimonious. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing is somebody talked about having strong institutions rather than having strong men in power or positions. How do you have strong institutions if we cannot sanitize the institutions? The code, no matter how highly placed. When we are talking about corruption, let us use the, the, the well-known, most important agency in the fight against corruption, that is the EFCC. Now, Nuhu Ribadu, who headed EFCC, had ended up being a case of the hunter becoming the hunted. And when you are investigating people who have occupied such positions, you will require... I hope you are hearing me. I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Yes. When you are investigating such positions or such persons, you will... An easy job to do forensic investigation. For example, let us use the subsidy matter. When we are investigating a matter connected with this subsidy regime that operated and put Nigeria back, it is not a...
uh, it involves some local it involves some institutional breaches and such investigation will not last in a day or a week and I know that every person who has had to be detained for such matters there is usually so so I, I, pending investigation but but then there is a there are laws that need to be followed i mean yes the efcc also does not operate in isolation they, there are laws that the efcc needs to follow and all of us including the court if if the if the court or the or the law says you can't detain or hold a person beyond 48 <laughs> hours why why does the efcc and sec other security agencies continue to hold people for longer Especially if you're saying you're fighting corruption and you want to do it by the books. This is what people no, are querying. I'm, I'm just trying to let you in into the situation we are in. In a bank fraud, for example, it is a different kettle of fish from investigating a case of housebreaking. It will involve some, some forensics. You will have to study some books. You have to study... But people, people get Usual order allowed by warrant by a court of competent jurisdiction. They, as the days go by, review that detention order to see if they are being complied with or breached. And that is why, when eventually such a person is charged to court, the court would also consider whether to grant bail on. Mr. Nekbo, we're going to have to. Um, you know, fix your connection. Maybe they may get Mr. Nick, we'll, we'll probably have to get you out and bring you back in to be able to sort out your connection where you're breaking and weren't able to make what make out what you're saying. Um, let me come back to you, M Mr. Kayade. Um, he's he's making a case that you know um, he's trying to say that we cannot build strong institutions without sanitizing. The system and I'm trying to quote him almost directly when he was talking about making a, a remark as to what you have said about you know building strong institutions as opposed to strong men this is something that we hear all the time but the reality that's on the ground how do we even go about building these strong institutions if we have more strong men than the institutions and is there a willingness let's look at the legislature which is um, a group of people who are supposed to legislate on issues such as this um, many would say that our legislators also benefit from some of these, um, you know, loopholes in our um, fight against corruption in the legal system, in the, you know, the rule of law. Former President Muhammad Buhari at a, uh, at, um, a, a legal uh, conference here in Lagos, if I'm not mistaken, or in Abuja, had said at, at some point that national security trumps the rule of law. And we're seeing it play out every single day. Many people also tie what's been happening across the African continent to this, the fact that the rule of law is never followed. How can we deal with issues such as corruption or, or trying to make sure that people do the right thing if the people who are trying to make these people do the right thing are not doing the right thing? Am I making sense? See, you have made a lot of sense, uh, Anne. You see, building a strong institution cannot be switched away from fighting corruption. And I will give you an example. Look at our NNPC today. Our NNPC today, vis-a-vis -vis our refineries that are not working. I bet you, Aaron, if about 80% of people in NNPC and that of refineries are being flushed out today and then made to pay for what they have made us to go through unnecessarily in this country. And then bring in fresh blood that are very, very it about our nation, you will see that all those refineries will work within what, one day. Where, where are we getting these passionate people from? Uh, permit me to ask. Are, are, they, are we getting I'm them from the moon? Are we getting them from Mars? Because the truth is, we also I'm have a system. Million. 
Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. I, but I have to put the, no, no, no. Please hold on. Where are we getting them from? Are they from the moon? Because we also not, let's not forget there is a system that is already on the ground. Whether we bring these people from the United States, from the moon, from Mars, there's still a systemic problem in our country. So how do we fix that? Please. And I was coming to where you just touched now. You see, in this country today, we have a lot of passionate people there. I wouldn't want to use myself as an example so that I won't be as if I am marketing myself. All right? But I have seen passionate Nigerians that have the opportunity to leave this country and jack up. But because they strongly believe in our nation, they strongly believe that people like Washington, people like Charles de Gaulle and others, Mandela, were in their country to contribute to the development of those nations. And they are here in this country. They are here in this country. All right? We can figure, we can figure them out. We can fish them out and then bring them up. All right? Two, when you now bring such people there, you give them a level playing ground to exhibit their potentialities. Because again, when you put people there, there are some strong people that I've been telling them, for instance, look at the case of Metawali. Let me come back to Metawali, whereby he allocated, he was alleged to have allocated contracts, giving those people money, and they didn't do the work. And they were telling the FCC that he asked them to go and change those monies to dollars, and then give some monies so the local government uh, executive and their particular commissioner, I'm, I like video. I'm sure, you, like I'm video. sure you're talking about Governor Ganduje. Including that, Ganduje. She thought of Ganduje was even seen face to face, whereby I was collecting those dollars. I'm talking about this, the issue of this same Metawali that has not been made Minister of uh, Defense or something like that. State for Defense, yes. Minister of uh -huh. Do you understand? I'm talking of that Metawali. That of Ganduje is still there. What has happened? So what I'm saying is, there are credible people in this nation that are still ready to ensure that Nigeria gets to its uh, El Dorado, that Nigeria gets to its Zenith, that Nigeria reach its Acme. But unfortunately, they are not having one godfather or the other that will push them. When you push those people there, and then you cannot use them to build strong institutions. And I go back Rather to my I go back to my question. There are very many people who can single-handedly be called, or rather, you can single you can single out of the crowd and say, This is a man of honor, this is a woman of honor. But then I'm saying we have a systemic problem. And when I talk about the system, I'm talking about the whole makeup. So if you bring one person, that, if you bring one person that is good and you put in a mix of people that are all bad, who are used to a systemic rot, what good have you done, really? And we are saying the same thing, but in different ways. When you're talking of the system, the system... It's made up of one at the top, the institution, and below it, the people. Are you with me? There are, the, uh, we are saying the same thing, but we are just using, it's a matter of semantics now. We have a system that is rotting, and there is need for us to overhaul this. I will give you an instance. I will give you another instance. When, when uh, Bajabi Amila was trying to become the Speaker of the House, 
His case came from America now. The case between him and his client. We are all privy to all this. I was among those that orchestrated, that gave it the volume, that I spoke up. Such a person, what do you expect? The issue, the issue still came up on the social media today. And what do you expect? When you have, when you have as the head of a society, okay, let me give you this analogy again. I'm sure you know the fish. And as a as a grown-up lady, you must have been going to the market to buy the fish. How do you know the kind of fish you're supposed to buy? A fish that the head is already smelling. Will you buy such a fish? You won't buy such a fish for goodness sake. Because when the head is rotten, definitely the whole system will be rotten. And that's how what we are talking here now. All right, Mr. Kayede, because for of us, time, because of time, I'm going to bring you to my last question so we can wrap up. Um, because I've been trying to get you to tell us how we can change the system, but uh, you keep saying one person. I don't know how one person, because I mean, I'm sure we can point to so many good one persons that have been sucked in by the system. Um, again, we, we as Nigerians have com con continued to complain about the fact that the, the fight against corruption has been lopsided. It's mo um, much more of, 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 of a witch hunt uh, as opposed to you know, fighting corruption. And there are others who would also say that when, when you fight corruption, corruption fights back. Will Nigerians in their lifetime anytime soon, under this democratic dispensation, um, be able to see a true fight against corruption? And how soon will that be? Again, we're still talking about Mr. President. Mr. President is just at, you know, at the beginning of his um, you know, tenor, and he still has you know, some more years to go. And there's a lot, like I said at the beginning, his plate is very full, too many things. It's dragged on, on the one side to insecurity, especially in the southeast. Um, you know, the uprisings. Um, he has to deal with a, an economy that's already facing a downturn. He also has to deal with the issue of sub, uh, fuel subsidy removal, the trust deficit that Nigerians have when it comes to this issue of fuel subsidy, the fact that there's been oil theft and nobody has been able to account for it. Shall we be able to say, see or boast of a true fight against corruption uh, under this administration or in the next decade? Democracy, democracy is based on the sanctity of the Constitution. And when you are talking about sanctity of the Constitution, that's what we call the rule of law. And when you are talking about the rule of law, it also has to do with justice dispensation. All right? The moment our democracy is allowed to throw up the kind of leadership that we require, definitely it will lead to the sanctity of our constitution. Okay. And when we have the sanctity of our constitution, definitely the rule of law we play out. Thank you. And when we allow the rule of law to play out, strong institutions will emerge. All right. We, we have to, to go. Say, we have to that go. That is to say. Mr. Kayede, we have to go. We don't have time. We have to go. We, yeah. we have to go, Mr. Kayede. I have to ask um, Mr. Negbu one quick question so that we can wrap up here. Unfortunately, his connection has been bad. Mr. Negbu, will we be able to see a fight, a total fight, a holistic fight against corruption? under the Tinubu administration or, or any time soon? It's, when you are fighting corruption, corruption fights back. Cherries of the post-subsidy wahala or trouble to keep quiet. They will try to influence the civil society, I try to influence the masses. What is important is that those persons have so much in their hands 
that they can to fight the system. What we must agree is that the manner of allegations, mental, social, and poor, that the process of investigation will take some time, requires that there be a detention order allowed or granted by a court of court. Talking about fundamental rights, there are exceptions to that rule or that court with cases that involve treasonable felony or cases that threaten the, the territorial integrity of the nation. Your fundamental right is put in a effort to jeopardize the security of our nation for your fundamental right to limitations to that right of personal liberty. Now, in this case, <coughs> investigation and charging a person to court. And when they are charged to court, it not it also to educate the society that there is the rule of sorry, that there is a day for reckoning. And the law of the requirement for would be practitioners of such a um, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Mr. Negbo. Unfortunately, your connection is really bad and we're losing half of what you're saying. But I want to thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Inaya Unoegbu. He's a chief political advisor to the governor of Imo State. Also, I want to say thank you to Dayo Kayade, who is a political technocrat. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here in the studio uh, and uh, having this conversation with us. Mr. Unoegbu, hopefully next time you join us, we'll be able to have a clear um, audio from you. Thank you today. But I look forward to this outing. All right. All right. Thank you very much. We'll take a break. When we come back, we want to talk about local government and the grasp of governors on their monies, especially their duties. Stay with us.